Ben uh, was one of our original founders of Wisconsin Tag Rugby. So way back in the day, uh, it was me and Tosa and Shannon who started a lot of the girls' programs in the state. Uh, we had rock departments and we said, hey, we, we see a, a void of how we can be better at starting. Why, why are the, the tackle high school numbers not growing? That was our initial question. So hey, we have rock departments. We could do we could do flat rock. We could fight football. You you know we have seen it. We know it's a thing. And so we initially got together and said we're gonna we're gonna do some camps and we're gonna play each other uh, a couple times. And then we started going. I, I know I've seen some stuff on Facebook. I think there's something at Fond Lap YMCA. And I think Waukesha does a program with Joe Cunningham. And so first year we got us four together. And since then we turned 100 kids into 600 kids. So um, Ben, just like uh, Skinny, uh, you know, where he, he's, he's copy Ben and doing certain things, Ben does it to the nth level, right? I do my summer program and that's it. I, I hang a little whistle and I go back, I go back to doing everything else. Ben is running his fall break, he's running his winter camps, he's, he's doing free days, he does everything all over there, he goes and breathes and dies. Boomers rugby is going to continue to be the squirrel, we're not getting rid of the squirrel. Uh, and uh, so Ben's going to talk about his experience in running fly rugby. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so yes, it's going to be, I'm probably going to be breathing through most of those slides because there's stuff that Matt talked about that are pretty common. Uh, but it's going to be my personal experience as far as I, how I grew my program. Uh, it may or may not be the same thing for you because of the different situation, the different cities. So uh, it's not about how you should do it, it's how I did it and the issue I had or the successes. And you know, if you tell all that with what Matt said and if you were at the P, uh, you know, you can kind of figure out how we started in 2006, which probably not going to be the same way that we will start in 2022, basically. Second thing, you may have noticed I have an accent. Uh, so no, really? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so if you if there's an issue, you know, I'll repeat. Uh, but so basically, we try to talk about most of those things. So why would you set up a tag rugby program? Uh, your location. Who is your competition, basically, uh, the age groups you're interested in running, what format I, I used, how did I start to develop my club, uh, growing by removing the barriers, what they are, or what I found they were in, in Fondalac, uh, question about money and, and people. Uh, so this is how Fondalac will be set up. So basically we have a 501c3 uh, uh, nonprofit that oversees four clubs. Uh, the Wolfpack, men's team, um, the Stoutman, which is a, a, a middle school, tackle boys and girls, and the, the, the high school. The Fondlake Sirens, which is currently dormant in the high school girls team, and us, the, the Boomers, which are on the flag team. There are four clubs, fairly independent, uh, under that umbrella that allows for some uh, uh, basic case for money purposes. When you have five one c three, there's more thing you can do than when you, you're not uh, uh, not for profit. So, as a flag, when I to to start over, when I started, uh, I came in the state in 2000. Um, don't ask me why. But, um, I um, was good back then. Yeah, I, I started to play rugby in 2020, in 2002, at the young age of 30. Um, and of course, when you start rugby at 30, you wear out really fast. <laughs> so I was done roughly at 2006. 2006, I started to figure out what do I want to continue to do for rugby. And I look at my uh, high school team, the Stockman, and what I see is, is uh, very bad uh, high cues, rugby, uh, not a lot of skills. Uh, basically, people have just started and not done too don't know exactly what they're doing. So my thought was, well, if I can actually bring a little bit of understanding of how rugby works first, uh, uh, maybe that'd be better in high school. So that was my own my idea. And, and, and when you do that, well, you you have to go to that full uh, circle of, you need registration, you need volunteers, you need money. That's what, what is going to sustain your, your program. Uh, but you also need time. That's going to be your biggest issue. 
Well, at least I found that that was a decent time. Um, so, why well, use tell the rugby program and type rugby? There's no right or wrong answer. Uh, you can do what I did, which is I need a feeder program for my high school, but maybe you are not in the rugby world, you may be in your rank department and you want to add something to your rank department that can bring more kids. Or some empowerment, there's some girl program, just like program for girls, I know that they exist, but are that purpose. So uh, there's no right or wrong answer, but you know, uh, you need to figure out what, why you want to do it, because it kind of influenced a little bit, or at least it did influence how I wanted to start it and to develop it. Just gonna make sure I know my time. All right. So the location, uh, I'm in front of that. So I need to figure out early on where I was going to go. Um, go to stay in the city, county, go to Dodge, where I live. Uh, it was 2006, and I look around the youth program around, and there is absolutely zero. So I had free reign and free range okay, on where I wanted to go, just not specifically the city itself. It is very fluid because as it goes, now we got Oshkosh as a flag program. So I'm not gonna go past a certain level and say, hey, do you wanna play for me? Or West Bend as a program. So those geographic area change. Um, 2006, I didn't have that issue. I, I, I could do whatever, but I, I needed to, I started from nothing. I had actually no background in how to start that. I just wanted to do it. So I had to learn my town. Uh, I had to learn about the kids. I had to learn about the environment. I had to learn about who could be my allies in, in the city. Uh, I had to learn my competition, what was going to, to go against me. Um, so, a bit of a competition. So, competition, now I figured out a little bit. In Fond du Lac, we have basketball and hockey that are pretty strong in the winter. Hockey is huge, uh, but it's a very expensive sport. So, when I do run my program in the winter, I know I'm losing kids for hockey. That's all right because it's not going to be everybody playing hockey. It's so expensive. In the summer, I'm playing against soccer and baseball mostly, a little bit football, but they are less a little later in the season. So it's not too, too bad. Uh, soccer is huge. I, I think that program over there is 1,200 people uh, for like soccer. Now, the issue is compared to us, there's an issue with attitude, so, uh, which I, I learned because some kids come from soccer and I heard, you know, I heard the horror stories. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna get those from some, some of those kids over there. So, and we're not really a threat right now. We are a big team for rugby, tag, but compared to 200 kids, we're negligible, so we're okay with that. Uh, baseball kids in our town, they're very capable with, with baseball. They don't go much other sports, so it's very hard to get them to come. However, uh, what I figure is that usually, sometimes you can partner or sometimes they can cross over. So hockey, they stay hockey in the winter and I'm talking to young kids, but I have a lot that comes in the summer for my program. So, and, and it's usually one play and he brings his friends. So, uh, baseball in the summer, kind of the same thing. They play in the summer, but in the winter they don't do that. So they come in my winter program. It's, it's, uh, it, it's beneficial for me. So back to the why, I, I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I, I just need to find out uh, uh, the age groups. And originally, I need to look at find my resources. And there was me, that's all. So when there's only me, I was not going to go all the way to first grade. I started by third to eighth because it was more manageable. And, and uh, as the club grew, we added first and second grade later on. But, uh, uh, and added more coach, more parents, so that was fine. Uh, now, what I put here is match coaches with your age group because they're vastly different. Yes, when you've got your volunteers coming up and they want to help you, that's great, that's the best thing, but uh, it's completely different to coach your first and second grade than to coach your third or fourth or fourth grade. They have not the same expectation, you don't have the same, the same expectation. Now, um, you need to find the right matches. Because you know what? Your seven and eight grade coaches usually is a little more intense <laughs> than my first and second. Uh, I cannot really have it go down to my first and second grade coach. It's not going to work. They are more about playing around and be fun. Uh, the seven and eight grade is super intense right now, it's super competitive. 
Um, and I had to learn also pedagogy. I had no idea how to work with kids. I know how to work with, with my kids, and I actually don't do a great job doing it. But working with other people's kids, sometimes you feel it's a little easier because you don't have the backlash at home. But you still, you still need to figure out. And I had to learn from zero. I'm not a, a teacher. I, I, I probably was a shyest guy when I was in school. So getting in front of kids was, for me, I think, terrifying. But uh, you, you know, if you like what you're doing, if you want to do it, you find a way, and, and, and that's what I did. I, I had to find and learn, okay, this works with a first and second grader. That doesn't work with a third grader, I had to figure six them out. Um, so I knew what I wanted to do, I know the age group, now I need to figure out the format. Uh, so I did a lot of research. It was 2006, there was a ton of stuff, but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do originally, so I started to look. Um, so there is, I, I did away right away with the touch. Touch rugby, which you know is a sport in itself. There's rule in touch, but for kids it, it's a no-no because they're gonna say no. You didn't touch me. You didn't touch me. It's no way. So I was immediately going to flag, but there is a lot of different rules on the flag. Uh, Maurice rugby in the New York area has a great program, but their rules were super <coughs> complex, and I didn't want that to to, to be used. Rookie rugby was not in 2006, but not exactly as great. As, as it is now, so I, I looked at the rules, yeah, like I'm, uh, Ostag is mostly Australian, look like rugby league, very rule intense, great for adults, but for kids it didn't work well. And then I found the, the Leonard rules, I think they do have the, the book here. So I found that, and, and I looked at it, and that was an epiphany. That's what I started with. And there was everything in it that I needed to begin. There was, um, there was the rules, there was the lesson plans, how to run a festival, everything for uh, 20 pounds. It was English, so I had to go into that. So I, that's what I picked. Um, easy to pick up, easy to learn, uh, good, well done, go ahead. Uh, that's, I said like that, 2006. We, we didn't have Tiger Rugby at that point giving us our rules, so we had to figure out from scratch what we wanted. And that was the most easy to, 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 to set up. So, a little aparte, because sometimes people don't realize that Tiger Rugby is not Tiger Rugby with flag. And when you have all boys that help, <laughs> get that mindset, you need to really share away from it. It is a sport by itself. So if you, and again, it goes back to the why. Why do you do the program? If you do the program to bring them to high school and, and you want to set up some things in flag that are going to be conducive in high school, that's fine, but that's not exactly when you're gonna play against all the tag team. It may or may not work because that's, there is a very specific way to play the game. That's why there's different rules, okay? So uh, be mindful of that. You don't bring always uh, the, 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 the coaching drills that you would bring in, in, in flat, in, in tackle, in flag, because there is some subtleties and some, some differences that, that are not going to, uh, uh, to work if you bring that, that kind of drills. So I, I, had, I knew the format. Uh, now, I needed to, I had my curriculum, but I needed to develop different expectations for different uh, different, uh, different grades, okay? So what I want my first and second grade to, to learn is going to be different than, than my seventh or eighth grade. So the first grader, they play as long as they're possible behind, and, and, and they grab their flag back, and they are front, I, I'm super happy about it, that's, that's amazing. Third and fourth, they pick up different things, you start to have a little more expectation on what they want or what you want them to do, and so on and so forth. So you, you change your expectation and you change your age group. It is the same game, that's the thing, is whether from first to eighth grade, the game you play is identical as far as the rules are concerned, which we can come back to it maybe a little issue at all the group, because they tend to get a little bored now, but they play eight years, the same thing. But um, in the meantime, uh, what you want them to get out of it is different by age group. And it goes beyond the sport itself. Uh, first, second grade, 
third, fourth. You want them to come back. You want to make it sure that they come back. Uh, five, six, when they're already there, they're gonna stick. So you do different things for that. That makes sense? Okay. So I started 2006 and I'm going to go and am I going to go out and say, hey guys, uh, come play rugby in my backyard, I'm a dude. That's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure he knows he's gonna come and, and okay. So I needed somebody to vet for me. Uh, so uh, the first people I reached out was the fund like creation partner. Because if they vet for me, then I have the back of an organization. They distribute, again, 2006, even no Facebook, no, no social media. Who do I go to to explain what my program is? Direct them, they have the catalog, they distribute to all the school districts. So I have to convince them. We didn't take long. I mean, uh, uh, maybe it's my rec there, but they were very open and they wanted a different program. It has revenue, it has a new program to them. So they were pretty happy. On top of that, they didn't need coaches, they need field, we had our own field. Um, equipment, they didn't need equipment. It was just, hey, I come, I know what to do, just just put me in your, in your program. So I did that, I was lucky I got a 500 grand from the United Youth and I got 12 balls from the US uh, Rugby Foundation. That's how I started in 2006. I had that, I was set, I was super happy. Come August, I need players. So what do you do? Well, you know they send those catalog, but in the catalog you just tell what it is. If nobody heard about rugby before, I think we're not register, I'm not sure. So I needed to make sure that my program was going to take off. So who do I go to? I go to, to my network. I have my friends, my family, uh, my rugby family. Uh, please, you know, if you have a kid, third to eighth, you know, do you think you can they can come in, in a four week program this summer, etc. So I decided to do that and by the end of registration I had twelve kids. Twelve kids, third to eighth grade, uh, that's the first team ever. <laughs> and I was super happy because twelve kids, six v six, I had a few high school players helping. I was delighted. You know, three kids, yeah, I would have been in trouble. But twelve kids, great. So that's how I was started. So again, if you start from scratch and you start your program and you got 12 kids, go for it. It's really, it's really how you learn. And on top of that, you know, it's 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 easier, it's smaller, you don't have the pressure, you can do it on your own. It's fine, and then bring them to a tournament if you want to, and, and they, they learn or they pick up with all the team. That's, that's you know what what small small, small team. So I start 2006, now I need to develop uh, uh, the club, uh, and by then, I I found my I found my niche. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. But kind of so uh, But I, I was super happy of this is really something that I never thought I would do, and I like it, and I'm going to continue to do it. But now I need to expand. So how do I do that? And I remember some of my past education, my current environment, and uh, the marketing goals. Basically, you need to be known, you need to be liked. And then you need to be used you need to register. But if you're not known, if you're not liked, it's unlikely that they're going to register. Okay? So you have to set up those how do you get known in your community and how you get liked in your community to begin with. That's that's my, my that was my problem first. So one tool that I really started to develop really soon is what I call the rugby discovery day. And it is basically a one hour or less. Uh, easy program that I can pitch to uh, fire teachers um, and we talked I mean we, we've been to other of those and, and we talked a little bit about that I was doing those rugby discovery day early on because the only way the kids were going to like the game remember 2010 2000 no internet or no Facebook they needed to see and, and, and play it so I needed to get, get in front of those kids and and you know, make them try. And you need to get that really fast. You have maybe 50 minutes to do that. So you know, I, I needed to develop something to show the rules, two drills max in 10, 15 minutes, the rest of the time they play, and you adjust how they play it. And at the end, usually two things happen. 
they like it or they hurt. Except the kids that never like Fayed and will never like Fayed. <laughs> so whatever you show in front of them, they don't like it. But those who are hooked, the Fayed teacher has your contact information, your email and stuff. And you know, always after Fayed, because I still continue to do that, uh, I always get an email to what oh, my kids wants to play, what is it, etc. Et so those things work well. Again, you may get one, two, three, but I mean, the more you do it, the more you grow your program. So the, 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 the rugby discovery there was very important uh, uh, to get into those, those, those schools. So either I was contacting the fire teacher myself or had a mom or dad saying, hey, you know, do you want to come and, and, and show because this is really great. So either way, you know, getting to the school and, and demonstrate beats anything because you get them to play. And, and not only that, but when you do that, um, when I was doing that, I was making sure I was mixing kids as far as who's going to get the ball first, because you always have the ball hogs, and you need to be make sure to, uh, uh, to give it to a girl first, or to a boy, and to make sure the shy guy gets a chance, etc. You, you need to be very inclusive, so you need to manage that at the same time. And sometimes their own peers are not even aware that that girl is super fast. And then that happens. And then they realize it, and then the girl is super confident. I just that because I got the one like three weeks ago that happened like that. And then the other boys now they're gonna try to find her on the fields and, and to pass the ball because they know she's she's faster, you know, faster to win. So uh, that that's 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 a great tool to. I mean, people discover their own abilities doing that. So uh, again, uh, legitimacy comes from people who vet you. So I feel. Again, not my stuff, but I had to mingle, I had to schmooze, I had to network, I had to shake hands, I had to talk to a lot of people that I didn't know I could do that, but if it becomes something that you're super passionate about, it comes extremely easy, I found out. So there is no way around it. You need to grow your network in your own city and, and to make yourself known because, again, 2006, 2007, 2008, not a lot of social media at the time, at least it was not super developed. So he had to, they needed to know um, how well you rugby, rugby is not in the community. I mean, there's still a problem everywhere, we, we know about it. Uh, but, it but it's important to, to you know, go to those institutions, Big Brother, Big Sisters, or uh, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, you know, to engage them, that's what I did, so that then it's a little more known with community that have all the kids. And then uh, uh, for your business, uh, uh, you need to develop your brand. I mean, uh, Matt talked a lot about that, and, and that's what we did too. Uh, you need to, uh, so for example, we started, I used the Fondac for me, but I didn't have anything. So then I decided to create my little squirrel thing. It's, it's, uh, it's a squirrel, so it's, uh, it's a child thing, so it fit well with the, with the little kids. Uh, and then we had a 10 years ago, or 50 years ago, I mean, there are things like that. Uh, um, that helps too because we couldn't really do, uh, uh, keep with that one that was very anonymous. Um, I created and you know tools, so hands out business cards, uh, posters, banners, sales, stickers, tattoos, you know what, uh, social media presence. Presence. I think I probably started Facebook in 2009, 2010. I don't remember exactly. It was a call from that. Uh, I was on LinkedIn. We talked about social media before. Who was, uh, I was on LinkedIn, I saw somebody from Washington State and talk, uh, they was talking about something about uh, developing a uh, uh, youth program and I reached out and the first thing they told me, you need to be on Facebook. Okay, <laughs> so I went on Facebook <laughs> and that, that's it. Uh, I, I said to learn how to use Facebook and to put a ton of stuff on Facebook. Uh, and yes, Facebook is for the moms, uh, uh, but first, second, third grade, they're the one going to decide where your kids are going to go. Um, so so that, that was important. Uh, still very much uh, uh, doing those uh, farmer's markets. I, I go there, uh, to my table, stuff. Usually it's manned by moms that have kids. So that's great because you know they're enthusiastic and, and they, uh, they explain to, to, uh, uh, to people. And, and we got usually the, the, the great thing on those usually um, whether it's farm market or uh, boys and girls partners event or Halloween stuff like that, um, I usually have a ball uh, to win, win a ring ball, 
and I put uh, uh, you know, a sheet, people give me their email address, so then I put that in my MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever, and then I, I keep that, and then I can inform them later on. So that's a way to pick up contact, even though you never know if they're gonna come back or not, but at least you're building up, or I was, I'm building up my, my, uh, uh, my contact list. <coughs> so a lot of events, I was, I'm still doing Fondue Fest, Street for Triumph, so Facebook, Instagram, Facebook ads. Yep, I put some money in Facebook to to uh, uh, to reach out people. Um, newspaper articles uh, when they want to, and go back to that. Uh, newsletter, mailchimp, like I explained. The Valley Guide. Um, that's all about us here. Um, I put an ad in the Valley Guide. Honestly, I don't know my return for investment on the Valley Guide, but I still put it because we never know, uh, and it's not that expensive. So. Why not? And I've seen our stories doing it too. Um, talking about the media, so uh, really quick, I had to learn what being <coughs> covering the media. And it's not about recruiting the media, it's more of a presence. Okay, there is a rugby team in town, so that's what I was doing. Uh, do they like success? Do they like events? Do they like special person? Stuff like that. Um, our local media only likes when you have a cup and stuff like that. So why well, say, what about the plastic cup? Like my windows, time, whatever. But if you win, just send it over to them. Or at least that's what I do, because they may put it. If I explain that I had in my town, Brownsville, 400 kids for my tournament, they don't give. That's not what they want. They want a picture with little kids and a cup, and, and they are picking that. So, I learned. <laughs> I still send whatever I can, but uh, it's it's me I mean, last year, uh, last year we, we we won all the all the seven days tournaments in flag, and they posted me once. Okay, I take it, but it, it's again it's only for presents, but you have to learn you know what works with them. So this is roughly the type of event that I have so far for 2020. But I mean everything. Uh, that I've done or still do. So I had my uh, uh, summer camp, I had six weeks or seven weeks. I had a YMCA winter camp of six weeks. And then I had free rugby nights, so it started actually uh, Thursday. Uh, so I had four, free, four or five free rugby nights in Omara, uh, four or five in Fond du Lac, uh, I had skills and drills, and then I went to other places. So the Bronzeville Rec Dev, I, I reached out to them four or five years ago because it started and it's my back, you know, this is my town, do you want me to come and do a, a rugby discovery day? They, have, they need stuff, so yes, I can, and I go every year, well, except 2020, of course. Boy Scout Troop, uh, a lot of things that you, you uh, might talk about, okay. Uh, Canberra School has a library, it is very active, and they, they bring kids, so I go to the Canberra Sport Public Library once or twice a year to do rugby uh, discovery day. Um, me, uh, Loma Ray Elementary Middle School, I, uh, there's a great teacher there that likes me, so we do two or three times uh, a year. Um, private school, so that comes usually from the, the, some moms or the, you know, that I in those school and say, you, you want to try to come, and I come, and, and uh, they ask me to come, and I come every year, like Facebook friend, <laughs> Redeemer. Homeschool rugby, if you have homeschool groups in your area, uh, and they're active and they like to have a fire you know, session, it's great to do that. And I, I'll, I'll do up school like a couple, once a month right now. Uh, big brother, big sister. Um, and then I was pretty much going to STEM Academy for three or four years now, it's uh, you know, different after COVID. But it was like every other week uh, I, was, I was in STEM uh, doing that. It takes time, yeah. <laughs> it takes time. I, I'm lucky that I can kind of figure out how to do it. <laughs> But I totally agree that this is not a one-person job. Uh, I shouldn't. Uh, so uh, doing that, I try to keep rugby in my all year long. But again, two big programs: summer and winter. And in real sporadically, left and right, trying to do uh, uh, rugby discovery days. That's really what I try to uh, 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 to get get into the school, get to know the fine teacher, to build a good relationship with them, uh, so that. I can come back because yes, like we said, it's it's not enough to do it once. You want to come back. 
So that was to be known. To be liked, you, you want to make sure that you know why the parents put your, their kids at, at your thing. Sometimes it's, they try this, they try that, they try that. You're the last resort. Okay, let's try to keep them here. Um, uh, you know, why would they come back? If, uh, and, and, um, and that's really one of the data points that I really try to keep in mind is how, what is my returning rate. Because I want to make sure that not only they come one year, but they come back. Um, and and uh, so first, second, third, in my opinion, mostly the parents decide what to do. Fourth, fifth, the kids can tend to have a say in what they want and don't want. Again, usually, they try several things, and, and but at that point, if they are happy with something, they're gonna keep it. And uh, again, <laughs> stay connected with your with your what I call my allies. Go back to the school, talk to them all the time. Uh, 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 okay, do you want to do rugby this community this year? Yes, no, etc. Because it's it's important to keep. But then you can send them more information about your summer program, or your winter program. Uh, they will gladly distribute it. Um, I did. When was that? I did a complete flyer distribution a couple of weeks ago with four or five schools that I was, you know, so I printed my flyers, bring them there because I work with them. So they, they, they're okay with distributing the flyers. I don't have to ask, uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they like what I did, we have a good relationship, that's, that's how it works. So, again, to be liked, your content, we always agree, must be fun, your cost low, uh, uh, and your culture is good, knowledgeable. But that's usually a, a formula for everybody. I mean, every program, if they're fun, cost is low, coach are great. You know, you need to have a different shares, and it's really, you don't want, you, you want to add that rugby mindset, you know, like our friend Ned Nigel said, this is not soccer, okay, it's rugby. Uh, we, we want to try to instill the rugby values early on to explain this is a different sport, you, you're not playing soccer, you know, uh, uh, there is a, a great amount of respect, etc. And, and the earliest you, you, you work, the more people understand this is a special brand, this is a special sport, it's different. And, and that's what makes you a little bit set aside from, from other, other programming. Again, find, finding your niche. And, and I did, like everybody else, work to remove the stigma of college rugby or uh, misinformation. Oh yeah, this is football without pads. That, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, as far as food, yeah. all right. So, uh, in my mindset, I always think uh, I grow or I die. That that's my thing because it's it's flat because I have partners that look at numbers. One setback, for example, was I started. So, 2006, I start with uh, Fond du Lac rank department. 2007, I do my first winter program with UW Fond du Lac. They run everything, they set up the price, I didn't have any say in that. But I was happy because I got a gym, and gym are premium, so okay, I let them go. But it was 45, 50 bucks. And we never took off. So, first year, 10 kids, second year, 8 kids. I start third year, or I think I start third year, and then I'm like, well, they're not talking to me, or they're not calling me. Um, and I reach out, and, oh no, we are not doing the program this year because it's not cost effective. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, I called the rec and they got me a gym and I did my winter program with them. And then after that, um, Brad Casera said, you really need to go to the YMCA. And we kind of had that for a couple of times. <laughs> and then I went to the YMCA and he was right and I was wrong. So I just want to oh, good you know, yes, I just, <laughs> hey, uh, I'm for that. Yeah, you you get that. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's on, it's on tape. tape. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's on tape. But yes, I, 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 you know, I went. But you know, it went because I didn't have that. Uh, uh, it, it didn't work on on the uh, on the fun like uh, uh, university because of numbers expectation and, and since I'm extremely worried or, or myself, I need to make sure that this year I got more than last year, that I got my numbers because I want my partners to be happy with numbers. Because one of those days, if, if, I, if I go to YMCA, they give me three hours of gym time every Saturday for my programs in the winter for six weeks. So and everybody knows how much those gym you know, costs. If I'm there, 
and I have three people. <laughs> They're gonna start looking weird because those there's a lot of kids going in the oh well why nobody is in the basketball thing? We we no no it's rugby. Well but there's nobody. So eventually they may come to me and say, hey, your program don't work. We we need, we, we have to cut you. So um, when it's great to work with partners, but they have expectation, you have expectation, you need to make sure that you meet them also. I always try to get new ideas to, to be creative. Uh, we're in 2022, I don't do stuff like I did in 2006. So I have, to, I, I have to adapt. So for example, in 2022, I may start what's called X League, which is a, a different, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not flag, it's uh, between uh, flag and tackle. It's a semi-contact thing. I just want to do that for my age grader going to high school. Um, I want to try it, so I'm, I'm testing it because I know my age grader. Sometimes, like I said, they have been playing since first grade the same game, and they may want something else, even during our season of time. The next thing may be the same. So I'm gonna try it again. I test stuff. It works. It works. It doesn't work well. I don't want. Um, uh, you can also try losing some games on that. Make a little bit of a challenge for yourself. <laughs> it's all about demographics. Yes, we, yes. we have Betty now. <laughs> we know what's kidding. coming. Yes, so, yeah. <laughs> unless we recruit massively. But uh, we also have family time rugby after practice on Thursday, for example. So it's more like adult time. Uh, so it's like boss time for those who saw my uh, the logo. So it's more complex, but not too bad. Um, but the kids can stay, the mom, the dad want to try. There's not a lot of people, but it's fun. So we do that on Thursday. And, and you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a fun way to engage the, the, the parents and the kids to play together sometimes. Uh, they never do, so, so that, that's the way to do it. Uh, I have to make that change, so new partners, new contact. I have three people that I've I been working forever that are returning in 2022, so I'm starting from scratch with some people, just shaking hands. Uh, Renee Bakari is leaving, uh, so I have a new guy in the rec department that I don't know, I don't know if they like me or not, so when those things happen, you need to go back and, uh, and, and, uh, and continue your networking. Uh, it's never, it never ends. A uh, little bit of timeline, so really early on, so 2006, uh, I started the, 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 the program. 2007, I put Chicago because, you know, we wanted to keep the kid interested, so we went to a rugby game in Chicago back then, that was Monster against USA, before the World Cup. So we brought our five or six kids, and we actually played outside the stadium against Rockford, Michigan. I think I saw a couple of other people around here. We lost. But uh, <laughs> anyway, they had a blast because it was a rugby game. Um, the, day after, the, the year after, we went to the high school girls final. Uh, and we had like a clinic by somebody from USA Rugby everywhere. So we tried to keep stuff interesting at the beginning because we didn't have many people. We wanted to keep them as interested as possible. I wanted a 100% return, so I needed to add on stuff. Otherwise, they may have say, well, it's okay, but not that much. So uh, we started, yeah, we started winter in 2007 at UW, then went to the Y in 2010. I put 2012 first tournament. We started 2010 to work together. The first first tournament was in oh, Fall Black, like, or 11 maybe. Yeah, yeah Fall Black. Oh, in Fall yeah, and then, then we had the Fall Black one. You didn't host the first year, no, it was Austin no. Tulsa the first yeah, year, and exactly. then you, and then yeah. Lake Front was the second or third year. That, that's that's very good. And then between 2012 and 2021, so we, we do the summer, but you know, I have so many of, of, of partners that I you know is to, to the working days that was up. There's not a week that I, I don't do anything uh, for my programs. Not necessarily in person, but you know, maybe August. <laughs> That's right. Uh, social media dilemma. Uh, um, social media is a fact. Kids are using it. Parents are using it, it, it's not going away. Whether we like it or not, I, I have to use it. So I started with Facebook. Today, it looks like I have to do TikTok, <laughs> like everybody else. Uh, I use it for marketing. Uh, um, but you know, you can use, or I figure out a way to use it for management tool, for coaching tool, for video. Uh, all the kids have, have, have cell phones. There, there must be a way to, to use that to your benefits. It's, it's just finding out what's going Okay, what's gonna what's gonna work? There was a great article in the Irish Examiner a few years ago called "Fortnite is not sports enemy," um, which 
is about adapting your teaching to new kids. So I put my, the link there, uh, if people are interested, because uh, it tells about it. So why Fortnite is, there's so much engagement in a game like, like Fortnite, and what you can use for your own benefit uh, as, as you teach rugby to the kids. It's, it's, uh, doing 20 laps is not gonna help you. That's, mm -hmm. that's basically it. Um, so very, very quick, growing, uh, removing the barrier. So there was three barriers that I identified, cost, transportation, and equipment. So in order to get rid of that, what I try to do is keep my registration very low, $35, or sometimes 15 at the Y, or zero when I have scholarships, like a little bit like that. Transportation, I try to set up parents to pick up kids by route. Uh, and equipment, I have a show exchange program. If I don't have the size I need, I, I have a little bit of money to buy one year or two. But, you know, a kid should not be, like Pat said, money should be an issue, transportation should be an issue, equipment should be an issue, if a kid's not right. And, and, and talking about the demographic, we certainly have more uh, uh, kids that are in, 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 uh, in a lower income family than, than the average of the life because we provide them. You just keep all the shoes and... Yeah, I have a big bag. <laughs> <laughs> Outside. <laughs> um, I distribute rugby ball. I don't... It might give them away. That's great. I, I can't because I don't have enough money. But what I do also is I do in, uh, the rugby ball as an incentive. So uh, a kid that return and bring a new friend, get a free rugby ball. So we, we do that. Uh, it, it helps to... Uh, to to get that, that incentive to bring the people. Uh, so really quick money. Again, I started with 500 bucks. Now my budget is basically 10,000 a year, roughly, because it's your own, they have a ton of stuff. Um, so registration, the rec, give me my money back. So that's awesome. <laughs> they say, oh, you want your money? Yeah, I do. So uh, YMC doesn't, but that's okay. Like I said, I, I take the gym time in time versus the money, so that's good. Uh, sponsor, jersey tournament. Uh, uh, fundraiser, so classic stuff. I still do, not because it picks up a lot of money, but there's also the uh, uh, PR issue. So it's great to be out. So, uh, you know, snack cabin, tournament sales, community work, uh, individual donation. We are 501c3, so grants now start to be interesting. Uh, online campaign, it's, it's effective if you target it really well. So you cannot just say, yeah, uh, help her, help her. Uh, program, if you say, yeah, it is for our new shed or something like that, it, it's more conducive for people to donate online. And in kind, end of season trophy, uh, really quick, I have a, uh, and I want to show a lot of shootouts too, but uh, we give plaques to our kids at the end of the year, like that. So, you know, they bring it at school, they're super proud, they love those. Uh, those are not cheap. If Joe Skelton was not doing that for me at a super, super low cost. I would not be able to do that. That plaque is probably 15 bucks. So I have 90, 100 kids times 15, can't afford it. He gave them to me at $3.05, 50 cents. It's awesome. So I, I just want to tell, if you want to do business with Joe, he's an awesome guy. Um, so yeah, and end of season, like, in kind of great. Uh, and, but as I say, I must, if I do grants, I need to track my expenses, I have a ton of data. So I'm a recruiter, head coach, fundraiser, admin, and uh, <laughs> text time. Text Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, coaches, I don't know what time I meant. Okay, I want to, we talked about that before, so I just want to give a couple of uh, info about the end. So that was that's our large cap. So that's the that's the summer. So we we're almost breaking the hundred. We had a setback of COVID, but we did COVID. Not a lot of club work during COVID. We did COVID. We, we managed. And last year it bounced back to 91. So we're back on track. Um, our winter program is about 70 kids a year so it, it's pretty steady it, it, it's good um, they're happy we have three age group in the winter instead of four but it works um, on field success again again we come back to plastic cup 
the only thing, the only uh, reason I have that there is that, again, it's not one of our unofficial clubhouse, at this cafe in Main Street, all the stuff are there. They don't belong in a coach shelf, it doesn't matter. But if they're outside and the kids can go to the cafe and bring their friend and say, hey, look, my picture is there, or this is a cup I want, or whatnot, that, that helps. So it's over there. Uh, you, need, you need to find an, an official clubhouse, though. <laughs> but, but that's where it is. Uh, and finally, just uh, uh, some numbers. So we have roughly 546 players since 2006. I'm just talking winter and summer program, not the rugby discovery day, the stuff I do, uh, 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 but just those two programs. Uh, we 25 went to middle school, still middle school, which started in 2019 for us. We had 32 that went to national clubs, not necessarily for the life, by the way. We had other uh, big max kids who went to our program for a year and then played for Apple of course. Uh, for example, we have eight, or we had eight, or eight currently, or some in college, and we do have a professional contract. Uh, that's Jola. Jola is here. <laughs> that's when he was, I don't know, 11, 12, not sure. Uh, Matt is over there, by the way, <laughs> with his kid, and, and Jola got a contract last year. Uh, no, this year he was drafted in August for San, Diego. Uh, for San Diego. So that's pretty cool when that happens. Again, going back to, uh, oops, going back, I, I, I take my 546 every day, it's just one, but it's awesome that you see that those guys stick on and they are able to make it so much. So, um, so that was really nice. Uh, listen, learn, I, I think I'm just gonna skip that because it's kind of like what with, uh, uh, Matt talked about. Um, I just want to see if you have any questions. <clears throat> Do you pay to get to use the YMCA right now? No. No. No, because it's it's a program, so they give me three hours. I, 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 they do their marketing, I do my marketing to pick up people, so I make sure I got enough for them, but it's zero. So you just got them to accept your program yeah. and then you run the program? And I run the program. They sometimes give me also helpers, so that's great, but I also have my coaches. So the upper team for hurting people. But yeah. You guys run there all winter, though, huh? Six, so. Uh, so we have four free Saturday coming up, kind of bringing people to learn, and if they like it, they're gonna register, and there's six more weeks. Yeah, winter two for, for the white. And Zeb, when I talked to Appleton, YMCA, and Harvard Valley, what the, the perspective a YMCA has is you're providing programming for their membership. They don't see it as you're coming in to use their facility. Right. They see it as you're, we have members, members need programming, you're providing programming. What they liked in Fond du Lac, Ben did, was when he went in to the YMCA, they were like, well, what's that going to cost us? And we told them nothing. You just charge what you want for the yeah. for the program and we'll come in and, and run it. Yeah. Simple as that, it won't cost you. And then they perked right up and it's like, yeah. we're in. They keep, they keep the money, uh, we always say, can you give me the 35? <laughs> 35 for non-members, 52 members, oh, I mean dirt cheap. Because like their youth basketball, youth months. baseball, youth football, they have to pay their referees and all that stuff, you know, for all that kind of thing. Ben went in there and, you know, didn't charge a dime. You know, they, all the profit went to them. So yeah. they're going to accept that. That's a good trade. You got, you got your gym time and they got, they got, the, they got a program they, that they don't need to do much about. Yeah. Any That's community great. program, any community, <clears throat> boys and girls, all that, those things. If you just offer it for free and they make their money off of whatever it is, they're going to accept you. Yeah. Well, Ben's friends with the rock department. Yeah, you have to, you have to be friends. That's the thing. Yeah, That's right. You need, you need that for it. That's why, you know, I could certainly do away with the, I mean, with the rank. I, I, you know, we got 90 kids, uh, we, we could do a little bit like Matt does, you know, on, on his side. But I want to keep the relationship because it, it, it's presence in the city. Uh, uh, you want to partner, you never know. So I, I, you know, he has some limitation in Kayasura, but uh, the, the, I think the trade-off is, is positive. Uh, you know, they don't, they don't have to do much. They, they give me my money back for the, for the rec. So that, that's great. They're happy because we, we have a, we have a program that runs smoothly. They don't have any issue, and they were the one that in 2020, for example because I'm very friendly with them, this COVID hit, UW 
because we have a memorandum of understanding to get a field into Paradise. So our field is there, we're renting it for five years renewable. They said, you can play. So I went back to, to the rec, they said, yes, use that spend. So I, I, I want to put them as my friends because, I mean, it's, it's all benefits. They have this, they send all the information to the schools. Um, when they need me, so the trigger trunk, for example, uh, you know, it's a winter thing. You decorate a, a car and you end candies. So we did that. They asked me to do it. I'll do it. I mean, you got like 200, 300 kids that come. You know, get your, you get get the candies. You you have a rugby ball. You you provide the same thing. You do a little uh, signing sheet. So win a rugby ball. Uh, they write it. So you have your email uh, uh, list. It, it's. Uh, I, I don't want to do part away from, from those relationships. I could, but I don't want to because it helps when when something happens or, or if, if you have a sudden need. When I need a, a, a gym in the winter sometimes, I, I call the, the rec, they give it to me for free. So Sorry to stop you, Ben, but we'll have, yep. you have to get the next speaker in here. So if, you, if anybody, thank you, Ben. If there's anything you want to talk to Ben about, uh, feel free to grab his contact.